one third of the houses that were bought in Texas last year, single family houses were bought by investors, corporations, Wall Street corporations. I hate to take a crystal ball out, but I have to say that I think that without legislation, uh, within the next 10 years, we're gonna be in a position where housing is to a large extent controlled by corporations and extremely rich people. It's also gonna be people who got in. So you know, if you're thinking about buying a house and you think there's gonna be a great crash, I don't see that coming because what you guys don't see is there's a demographic switch where instead of it being ma and pa and you and I buying houses, it's corporations and they make a lot of money off of these rentals. What you guys need to understand is they're borrowing money at a much lower rate if they're even borrowing it. A lot of these are hedge funds that are just stacked to the gills with cash and these houses give them a good return for their investors. So this TikToker by the name of Jennifer Beeston points out something that is absolutely critical to understand, which is the simple fact that the housing market is different now. A lot of people are predicting that there will be some sort of stark decrease in the price of homes, but there's a big reason why that's probably not going to happen, and it is the fact that large Wall Street investors are going out of their way not only to buy apartment buildings and trailer parks, but also now single-family homes. And the purpose for this is quite clear. If they can scoop up property faster than any individual buyer can, if they can throw down these cash offers that are much higher than the asking price, then they can squeeze working class people entirely out of the housing market and put people in a position where effectively the United States population will be forced into a permanent renter status. And this is obviously a pretty significant problem. And so you see that any reduction in housing prices will lead to them just buying up more houses. So any type of crash that might otherwise result from the fact that people simply can't afford to buy a house anymore will be completely counteracted by the fact that investors are dumping in money to buy this cheap housing. And just a few years ago, investors actually went out of their way to buy up as much trailer parks as they could, and the average cost of living in a trailer park has skyrocketed. This has put some of the poorest people in the United States in incredibly tenuous financial positions. This has also led to a wave of homelessness across the country as all the eviction moratoriums have expired. And now here's where another critical financial detail is important for this story. And that is the simple fact that these giant investment firms can tolerate a lot of empty properties. They can sit on empty houses for a long time. In fact, it's more profitable for them to do so under most conditions. And the reason for this is quite simple. Rather than allow the market rates for rent to go down, they would tolerate empty properties and more homeless people. Because if they open up properties at lower rents, then there would be lower demand for their other properties, and they wouldn't be able to force people into those high rents. But if you can effectively create monopoly control over the housing market, you can sit on tons of empty properties, just keeping people out of properties and homeless is actually a profitable strategy for these businesses. Because once again, the whole point is to create a class membership requirement in order to purchase any type of home. I also wanna to touch on something that's really important to understand. Before we get into the solutions that would be necessary to actually deal with the housing crisis, we need to acknowledge one important thing. Home equity is a myth that is sold to working class people. Think about it for a second. If the cost of everybody's house increases, theoretically, an individual homeowner is making equity. But ultimately, what is the net positive result for them? You see, if home prices are going up everywhere, then the equity that you have, if you were to move, for example, you might at temporarily have a lot of cash in your account, but you have to put all of that towards your next house that you're about to live in. And so all of that cost is immediately sunk in again. What people are told is them building individual wealth. In reality, is everybody together paying more for housing because they think it'll mean they will get more later when everybody is paying more for housing in the future anyways, completely erasing all of those gains. It's like everybody standing up in a stadium. If you're the only person standing up, it's really great. But then if everybody stands up in front of you, we're back to square one. Now understanding that is why you should support policies that even though they will reduce the cost of housing, they will also reduce the cost of housing. Sure, you might lose equity, but what you gain is a lower cost of living. So what ultimately can address this? Fundamentally, at the end of the day, there needs to be restrictions on who is allowed to own property. 
I think a lot of people understand that allowing large Wall Street investors to come in and create housing monopolies across the country is a pretty bad thing, and that maybe perhaps we shouldn't allow giant corporate landlords to own huge amounts of properties and let them sit empty. Then there's of course the question of them sitting empty. If they're sitting on a house or an apartment unit or a condo that sits empty for an extended period of time, or is only used for things like Airbnb, then that squeezes people out of the housing market and drives the cost up for everybody. If we put in place strict requirements that every single unit be filled, and if they don't fill the units, then the government will come in, take the unit, and fill it with homeless folks so that they can actually have real shelter, then that would drive rents down incredibly quickly. The government could even go one step further, and they could literally use the eminent domain laws that are on the books that would allow them to take these properties and convert them to housing cooperatives and to convert them to permanent housing for homeless folks. At the end of the day, politicians talk about housing being a human right. Well, if they really think that, then there are specific policies that we can enact to make sure that everybody has housing. And when it comes to dealing with things like homelessness, the only methods that have proven themselves to be effective are housing first policies, which make sure that homeless folks get unconditional housing right off of the bat. This is Ben Corolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on the Young Turks Twitch channel, and you can follow me at Benjamin Corolla on Twitter.